This is Florida Plant Mama coming to you from Zone 10A, Central Florida. I'm about to harvest these peas, you guys. Sugar snap peas are ready. Finally. I didn't think I was going to have a successful harvest this year, but so far so good. I'm about to clip them all off. How exciting. So this is my sugar snap pea harvest. Nice group of crunchy, sweet sugar snaps. I'm so excited. Last year, my sugar snap harvest was trash. But this year, I think I'm doing something. Can you appreciate this space? Or does it all look like a jungle to you? like it does to my kids and my husband. Here we got our little arch trellis made of cattle panel. You can't even tell with all the growth around it, right? So we got our honeysuckle on here as well as the jasmine and the Mexican torch vine or flame vine is kind of growing around. And look, we've got the jasmine is starting to flower. I absolutely love, love the smell of jasmine. I'm all about the fragrant plants. Shall we go this way or shall we go that way? I think we'll go this way and then come back around. As you can see, I've got a cabbage in a bag that is completely blocking this path, but it's starting to head up. So I'm going to leave it alone. We got a couple things in here that have gone to seed. It's the hot, cold weather. And look, purple cabbage. Look, Amy, purple cabbage, the saga. It's growing. Let's hope it heads up, okay? Amy knows my struggles with the purple cabbage this year. Okay, we continue. Some more milkweed and look who we have. That looks like a swallowtail caterpillar enjoying a meal. And that's why I have them here. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We have a self seeded blue passion flower here. Okay, it's not supposed to be here. Uh, and yes, these things will go nuts. Um, I was told that they would pop up everywhere if you plant them anywhere. <sighs> I don't exactly want this here. I can't tell if it's in the ground yet or if it's in a pot, but I've got to come and figure out if I'm going to keep this passion flower or if I'm going to relocate it or if it's going to go in the compost. This one does not pr produce a fruit that is nice to eat. Um, it's uh, pretty much ornamental. I put it around that trellis over there to attract and feed the butterflies. And it's all the way over here now. I've been picking this stuff out since I planted it. It's not a big deal to pick it out, but um, you just know if anyone's planting this uh, passion vine uh, flower, that it gets everywhere. And over here, we have a tiny little fairy garden that is already getting swallowed, as my husband said it would, by the plants. Do you see my little froggies? Yes, I got these cute little froggies from the Dollar Tree with the little house. A little interest there. They were so inexpensive for ceramic little decorative pieces we've got i believe you are a stokes aster either that or you are black-eyed susan let's see so this is a black-eyed susan and this one volunteered and we've got fever few 
I try and squeeze my medicinals wherever I can. I do have a little medicinal section, uh, but it ends up being all mixed up anyway because I plant things where they seem to want to grow. And the way I figure that out is I do test areas. I plant them all over the garden and wherever they take off, that's where they stay, okay? So I've got the Fever Few, which is a great medicinal for fever, of course. Helps with migraine headaches, stomach upset, insect bites, fertility. I mean, this thing has many, many benefits. It's bitter as all get out, and you definitely feel like you're taking medicine when you drink a fever few tea. Um, it is considered a bitter, uh, but it is so beneficial. And then we've got this darn weed again. This one I don't like because it's not aesthetically pleasing to me so it has to go when i see them i go along and i pull them out because it's taking the nutrition from my other plants i've got some daffodils in here too hopefully they will flower as well okay now here i've got some bags waiting to get some sweet peppers in them i've got a couple of peppers already in from the batch of peppers that has uh, failed thus far and I will explain that to you in another video. Oh no, the shooting range has woken up. You may hear some shooting during this video. That shooting range is probably about seven to ten miles away from my house but sometimes you can hear it like it is around the corner. And look, here's another one. Another passion flower vine. And we got some alliums back here. More fever few, sweet William, fever few, another agave. We got the floss flower again, another balloon flower. And in here, we've got a cranberry hibiscus that has <laughs> the passion flower vine tangled in it. Oh my gosh. Back here, we have our blackberry trellis. My husband made that trellis for me. So we got a row of blackberries coming up. The Biden's Alba is in that section. So let's come around. A little nasturtium growing. No flowers yet. I'm really, really trying hard <laughs> to not have this be an hour long video but I don't want to rush and there's so much to see and I just want to share it all. Here is a citrus plant. This is a Persian lime tree. She's probably about three years old as well. I purchased her as a seedling. She is sitting behind or beside a cranberry hibiscus. There is my bird feeder, which I need to clean and refill. It's got a little dunks in it. I like to put the dunks in to prevent the mosquito larvae in Florida. That is a big deal. We got the Rose of Sharon hibiscus that is sharing some space with another volunteer milkweed. I can't wait till this thing flowers. It is just starting to put on its leaves. I am super excited. We've got some sedum in here. I literally just pull this sedum and I plant it. I, I just pop it in wherever I want to see them and it grows. Okay, so here we are. Sometimes I watch people's videos and I get lost and I don't know where I am in relation to where they started. So here we have it. We've already seen all of this. This is the path that leads out and this is where we are. Okay, this is an asparagus bed. Asparagus has just started coming out the next season that this asparagus grows, it is ready to pick and eat. You have to wait about two or three years when you first plant the asparagus. Um, you let it fern for the first two years and then after that you can start picking the stalks and eating them. And look, we've got more swallowtail caterpillars. Okay, we got another Persian line. We've got a, oh, I can never pronounce this properly. Oh, I can never. Blanket flower. We'll just call it a blanket flower. Some of these I plant from seed and some of them I cheat and get starts from the nursery when I can find them 
inexpensive and by inexpensive I mean under five dollars a container because they are getting out of control with these prices okay we've got a little bit of Elysium here with another black eyed Susan and this looks like a sweet William here we have a um, hardy kiwi vine it is also just starting to leaf out they always look dead in the winter and then on the dead stems they start growing leaves so don't be impatient like i am and consider plucking them out because you think they're not doing anything and here is the new purple passion fruit vine that i just purchased at the garden um, festival that i took you along for i've got a honeysuckle another one on this trellis and this is the blue passion flower vine this is where it's supposed to be okay and then we got this guy this looks like a weed to me all right this guy ugh, it's not exactly well it's a weed to me because i don't want it here and this thing can be pretty invasive this is a mexican petunia this was on the other side of the garden way back there when we moved into this property and i just keep finding it everywhere and it does take over a space so that will get pulled out we continue here we've got some sugar snap peas which are starting cook to come through the dogs love these and so do i we've got some champion tomatoes which you've seen me work on before i've got to come through and get these on the trellis here now remember i said i'm going to once these are done i will be removing them from the ground and i will try no longer to plant tomatoes directly in the ground i will plant them in the bags instead so these bags have been set up for my black cherry tomatoes um, and they will grow on this cattle panel trellis all right so i've got cucumbers this is my cucumber bed as well so I've got a bunch of different varieties of cucumbers. There's the path. As I turn around in here, I have my plum trees. One, two, three. This plum right here that is just starting to leaf out is my Stanley plum. And then I've got my Scarlet Beauty plum. I don't see any fruit on her. And over in this direction, I got my golf beauty plum. Now I thought I, yeah, I do see some plums on the golf. They're still little and they're green, but they're there. Oh wait, look, the scarlet does have a couple plums set on it. All right. And in this bed, I've got calendula. I got marigolds. I got lemon balm, I've got oregano, I've got sweet william, Biden's alba, sisu spinach, longevity spinach, my beautiful Brazilian grape tree, also known as the jabochicaba tree. And we've got this little berry thing. I think it's a, a Logan berry. It's got thorns on it. I try it and wrap the plants that has thorns on it uh, in a cage just so I remember they're there and I don't kill myself when I come through okay and we've got the loquat tree which you've seen before you saw the fruit from the loquat and I've got two loquat trees on this side I don't know the variety of the trees and then we got Cavendish banana tree and look we've got a rack of bananas okay as I go through can you see where I am the pepper beds are right ahead and over here this is my bed for turmeric and for uh, ginger. It gets uh, some shade. They like the shade. It is right by my um, jasmine and Mexican flame uh, vine trellis. I got some sisu down here. There's also some ornamental ginger down here and a little bit of turmeric as we come around. This is where I planted the onions with you guys and they are looking quite happy i've already come through and cut the tops two different times 
so that they are more sturdy and that they leaf out more. And uh, the cucamelons that I planted are doing well also. We've got the Biden's Alba that is growing. This is the one that I didn't want to move. And ugh, we've got this thing, which I believe, what is this? Is this another? Oh, this is another Biden's Alba coming through. Okay. And we've got my sugar apple tree, which is about four years as well. This is one of the first trees that I purchased as a tiny little sapling and it has gone through the ringer. This thing has died and come back probably about four times. Well, I thought it was dead, and, but I decided to just leave it in the ground and long and behold, it's bringing back. This is the tomato trellis that you made with me. I mean, that you watched me make with a uh, little help from the hubby. Uh, so I've got my tomatoes here. These are the new sun golds that I popped in here. They were from the stressed group of seedlings that I just grew. We've got another beautiful nasturtium plant. These are more Black Eyed Susans. We've got some hot peppers in this section. These are either cayenne or um, they are um, serranos or soshitos. I, I plant my hot peppers kind of away from my sweet peppers to avoid that cross-pollination. This is my crimson cherry tree, which has just started to leaf out. And we've got the tomatoes. They are doing well on this trellis. They have grown by leaps and bounds. We've got Biden's Alba and lemongrass. We've got here a plum cot that is also just starting to leaf out. It's so exciting to see these things come to life. And we've got a sweet pluary here. Sweet treat pluary. Okay, I'm gonna come out of this area. Shall I come over here or shall I go that way? I think I'll go this way. Okay, we have the St. John's wort here, which is another excellent medicinal. We got firebush. Firebush is one of our Florida natives. We've got some more of the tomatoes here. Some sweet alyssum there. Another black eyed Susan. They grow well and um, they're easy enough. So that's what I plant. We got a turnip here that's gone to seed. Some society garlic, some more society garlic, a little weed that's decided to pop in there that I get to get to. Okay, look, this is the home of my water barrel. Uh, don't worry, I've got dunks in here as well to help fight the pesky mosquitoes. This is where I planted the rest of those onions. We've got, oh, I'll put the name of this as well. We've got an elderberry here. I've got two elderberries in this area. Elderberry here, and then the other one is here. This one doesn't seem to be doing as well. This is the um, Johnson elderberry, and this should be the Adams elderberry. And then we got that darn weed again, that, that the, uh, what is it? The thing, the petunia, the Mexican petunia that I need to get out of here. Here we've got our Perla, Didi, look. Perla is doing very well. We've got a little bit of that stinky red salvia that I don't like that decided to stay. I got a white mulberry tree and it's got some mulberries on it. I know it looks like a fuzzy caterpillar, but it does not taste what I imagine a fuzzy caterpillar tastes like. Look, it's all in here, this petunia. When did that happen? Ugh. All right. I got a few things in here. A little cap couple carrots that have managed to get in there. I planted some flowers from seed, some sap flowers in here as well, and they seem to be doing okay. All right. Oh, 
a pointer stuck on this pepper plant. There we go. So as we continue to my left, I have another longin tree. This is a Kohala longin. And it's next to purple iris here. Purple iris is so pretty and it is about to flower. It looks like an alien to me. Look, the longin. This longin is flowering. This mild winter did wonders for my flowering fruit trees this season. Hopefully I'll get lots of fruit and not just a bunch of flowers. And we've got a groomy chama tree that is starting to throw off new leaves. Let's continue around. This is the second banana patch or circle. And we've got the rack of bananas there. And I got some cabbage in here. So I try and throw as many different varieties in a bed as I can. Variety is good. Monoculture is bad. Bloody duck. That's what this is. There's some whore hound in here as well. We got some sage. And we've got a rosemary that I gotta make sure that I take this petunia, Mexican petunia off of. Look, it's even growing back in here. Gosh, when did it get so out of control? We're back behind the honeysuckle trellis here. And so this is the longed bed with the groomy chama and some plumbago. And we've got a little bit, some different varieties of flowers growing down here, including the balloon flower. We got a rose bush in here. Okay, some more plumbago. We've got the pencil tree, which gets really, really tall. Thought it would provide some interest in here. Got some coleus in with my beauty berry. Beauty berry, no berries as yet, but we are starting our new flowering. We've got our Texas sage bush. A shrimp flower. There is a, a little lychee plant right here. And we've got some more of the guava. These are the tiny little guava, um, catly guavas. There is supposedly mang uh, strawberry and lemon, but I don't, I, we didn't get any um, strawberry catleys last year. They were all lemon, even the ones that I thought were supposed to be. Um, strawberry and I've got a couple of pots here this one's empty you got to fill that up and in this one I've got some more kohlrabi who knew I had such a difficult time such a diff difficult time growing these uh, kohlrabi last year and now I've got them just in this pot with a few little carrots too all right down here we have the plant that I grow to make my own liquid fertilizer. It is excellent as chop and drop and it grows vigorously. This is the sterile version. This is called comfrey. Many, many uses for that plant. But again, I get the sterile version uh, because if you don't, you'll have comfrey jumping like that maypop thing has jumped. See, as you can see, the cat leaves are start, starting to throw flowers too. And we got a little volunteer salvia here. And we've got some more pots with tomatoes. As you can see, I put pots along the perimeter of most of the garden, just again, to maximize the space. And all of these kind of agave type plants are courtesy of Dee Dee. Thank you, Dee Dee take the babies of her plants and just throw them around in my garden. I've got a, another asparagus bed here. And here we have the sweet potato bed. And I've got a bunch of sweet potato slips in here um, that I'm going to cut off of the sweet potato, the one that's not direct, the ones that are not directly in dirt, but are kind of growing on the edge of the potato. And I'm going to root them in some water and then replant them in this pot. We have here 
a tiny little bush that I got that's finally starting to go. This is my little bottle brush tree. I have to have a bottle brush tree wherever I live. I love it. And then down in here, we've got some ground cover red thyme. We've got another hibiscus here that is also leafing out. This one I cut back. I like it when they have a controlled height. All right, so this is where we are. We're now to our next cattle panel. And we've got some nectarines here. Okay, we've got two nectarines that are extremely densely planted. This first one is a sun racer nectarine. And the one behind it, her sister, is a sun mist nectarine. And look, everybody, we got some nectarines. And we're still flowering. It's very exciting. Okay, if I turn to my right here, I got another sweet almond bush tree. I love sweet almonds, so I just have to put it everywhere. We got some peanuts here. And behind there, we have my bay leaf tree. This is the one where you actually make the, um, you have the bay leaves for the, like, uh, Cajun cooking or New Orleans style cooking. And I just can pull those leaves and dry them and, or use them fresh. This is another fire bush. It's so vibrant. I'm gonna get another couple of these because I love this pop of flame color. And it is right beside my Spanish lime. This thing is prickly as all get out and that's why it's up underneath here where I can avoid being stuck. All right, we've got another loquat tree. This one had a couple of fruit on it, but the birds have already taken them. So that's the loquat, that's where it starts. And behind it, which to my amazement is still alive. I've cut this thing down probably about five times already. All right, this is my horseradish tree, otherwise known as the Moringa tree. And then we have another comfrey. I've got mint back here as well. And uh, some more lemongrass back there and a big bush of lemongrass over here. And then in here, I've got the bleeding heart vine. It has finally kind of slowed down on its flowering. And I've also got a yellow mandevilla here. She's not flowering just yet. Come around. I've got my Meyer lemon tree that has been bursting with flowers. And then I have a grapefruit tree back here. And I've got a raspberry plant in here somewhere. And then I got pots. Of course, we have to continue with pots. Wherever I can find, or rather, they're, well, they're fabric pots. Wherever I can find an empty space, I toss in a fabric pot works as ground cover and when I fertilize the bags the ground gets fertilized oh look we've got some strawberries down here as well and there looks like it's a ripe one that I wonder if sweets is going to find and eat oh she sees it oh good she isn't smelling it and we've got dill plant we've got some more black eyed Susans and if I turn around kind of to face the trellis as I go through, we have another kumquat tree. And we've got this date tree. This is a Lee date. They're supposed to be the sweetest dates. And is it waking up? It is a just, just now waking up. Can you see that? Just waking up. And this section is another asparagus bed, but I never limit it to just the asparagus. So we've got, like I said, the black eyed Susan, we got a little basil, 
we got some strawberries in here we've got some onions we've got bunching onions we got a little broccoli uh we got another sky flower that is reaching out around my dragon fruit we got a kale let's continue through and on this side beside the Meyer lemon we've got some Tokyo Beckina that has gone to seed down here you know I grew it but sadly I did not eat it before it went to seed so I still don't know what Tokyo Beckina really tastes like and then we've got another bed of onions and I threw some bags back here remember the bags that I was in a quandary about what I was going to do with them and uh, because I needed to make space for the new things well I put them back here so we got a bunch of peppers we've got some Swiss chard mixed with some Shasta Daisy here's a canepa we got some celery in here and another canepa in this bag we got some more peppers yeah and then we've got my ground cherries back there and they are really putting on fruit okay oh there's some ground cherries in the bag that i need to pick up and we've got my pomegranate here hopefully this one is going to flower this is the russian pomegranate that does much better in um florida than i think the uh other you know the great wonder or whatever it's called um pomegranate this is a um a, how do i pronounce this name slovatsky pomegranate this is a volunteer bush that i decided to keep because the pollinators seem to enjoy it. Some more Tokyo Beckina, it's all gone to seed. More onion, another onion bed, and then more of those peppers in bags. I have, you can see it's growing very well. I still have a couple of blueberries in the ground back here, but most of the blueberries I remove from the ground um, and put in the bags at the front of the garden, the entrance of the garden. My apple trees that we repotted together are here in their pots next to another bag of ground cherries and these are the fuji apples look i hate to point at the fruit it's supposed to be bad luck but that is a little fuji apple that's coming along i only see that one thus far but it's there we've got another nectarine here that has not woken up yet i transplanted this one um late in the fall i'm hoping that in the process i didn't damage it uh, but it is still alive i've done the scratch test and it is still alive okay as we continue i have holly tree that was supposed to be a tree that sat in the middle of the garden to be used as christmas decoration tree as i turn here i've got another little banana circle a sago palm that was here when we moved. Uh, these, I believe, are the little finger bananas. And back there, I've got two elderberry trees. We've got the tea plant, which I cannot take credit for planting. The, this tea plant and the palm were here when I moved in. And down below, we've got a Mexican heather and then that darn petunia. This is where it's coming from. I pulled all this petunia out and it is all returned. That was here before we moved in as well. Continue, we have that blanket flower again. Got some flowers starting to come up and open on that. I've got another couple of elderberries back here that I keep saying I'm going to stake, but I have not done as of yet. I'm gonna do that today. I am, I'm going to do that today. Got another little fire bush here. Oh, this thing, I'm gonna replace this. It, look at what the Florida climate does to non-aluminum metal. It just eats it right up. We even painted this with like a protective paint and it is barely three years old and already it is pretty much disintegrated. So the rooster will go. 
as soon as I find something to replace it with. This is a golden shower bush or thrialis. I think that's how to pronounce it. It makes really, really pretty golden, like yellow shower of flowers. Um, but this uh, lemon balm or lemongrass rather is uh, kind of falling on top of it. So we've got to fix that today. Then we have the fire bush and then we have my sweet almond that I have pruned into a tree. I think it's very pretty. And we've got some Shasta daisies down here next to my oldest gardenia tree. That is one of the first trees that I grew. And what are you eating, Finley? We've got some sedum that I put down here too. Right, we enter this place. We got some more lemongrass. And this is the other hardy kiwi that I have. I have about four hardy kiwi plants. Um, one of them is a male. Back here, I have put some seminal pumpkins. We've got another bay laurel. Another rolls of Sharon that's starting to leaf out. We've got a gara that I just planted in here. I planted these gara last season. All right, so a few kind of natives in this area. This is also one of the oldest longan trees that I have. It died back horribly one winter. And then I kind of transplanted from the middle of the garden to this area and it is slowly returning. We've got an ornamental hibiscus tree here. It's just for interest. And here is one of my lychee trees. What variety of lychee is this? I'm looking for a tag. This is a Brewster lychee, lychee light tree. This is my brand new vine that I have put in this little trellis. This is called a Bengal clock vine. It makes these absolutely beautiful purple flowers or purpley blue flowers. I had one blooming um, last week, but the bloom just fell off. Hopefully I'll get another one soon. And more of my ground cherries that are ripening here that I thought were tomatoes when I planted them, but it turned out that they were ground cherries. And look, we've got a, a nice setting of blueberries. It's a blueberry bush. Okay, this is another dumpster dive or <laughs> forest dive find. This was out in the woods behind my house. It's like a metal uh, fire fire pit thing or stove. This is another strawberry guava. Not a catley, just a, a strawberry guava. Come back around here. Looks like I have a volunteer sweet almond from the branches that I cut back and just kind of laid down in here. They're all starting to grow. Another lemongrass. And this is the grape vine. You can see again, it's starting to leaf out. Okay, you saw the back end of this we went through. That's where the Suriname cherry is. Now we're going around the front. Another gara is here. Some beautiful coleus. My little weed again. And then we've got a bag here of German chamomile mixed in with calendula. And over here we have the front side with some balloon flower. I'm trying to get as many kind of um, natives right up through here as I can. Another more blue-eyed grass. And in here we've got my first hydrangea and it is just starting to leaf out as well this is called what kind of hydrangea is it it's, uh, it's a high light hydrangea does it say the name the variety it doesn't really have the variety but i got this from home depot or lowe's on sale you know when they get all beat up and ready to die 
because they have no flowers on them. And I decided to rescue it and bring it home. So hopefully it does well in this area. There's another lychee, a sweetheart lychee on this trellis. This plant I thought had died. I've got three of them in here. I love the little purple flower that they make. The name of this plant is 